Thirsty. Oh, so am I. Ah, but there's nothing. Fred, throw away his canteen. Pick it up. Why should I? It's empty. You heard him, soldier. Pick it up. I ain't no soldier, Sergeant. If it'll hold water, we'll need it now. Pick it up. You show me something to put it on, go pick it up. You heard the lieutenant kid. Do as he says. Oh, what the hell is this? You guys know the war is over. What's the matter with you anyway? Get your hands off me. <laughs> <laughs> Your hands are kind of long, kid. Next time, I'll size them down. There won't be a next time. All right, boys. We'll take a break over there. I don't understand you, Fred. Look, the war's over, and I don't like to be shoved around. You agreed when we started out, I'd ramrod this outfit. It's still okay with me, but it's those other guys. Still has to be a chain of command. No more Rebs to fight, but there's Indians. If we want to survive, we have to stick together. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thought you said the war was over. Okay, Larry. Atta boy. Hey, Elstrom. What's the matter, kid? You lost your spunk? Don't you worry about that. Tell me what we're doing here. Well, let's see. We're riding across the dry and dusty plains of Oklahoma, a mighty band with a victorious Union army, on our way to Homestead Land in exotic New Mexico, where we'll meet some pretty senoritas, marry them, settle down, and <laughs> get rich, and live happily ever after. Yeah, but what am I doing here? Oh, you're a little crazy. Well, sure, but 
You mean to tell me that you're really going to settle down and be a farmer? Hell no, I'll have all you guys working for me inside a year. No, no, not me, you won't. In fact, in fact, I think I might even turn around and go back right now. <laughs> you're not that crazy. Why not? Because you wouldn't get a mile before somebody imparted your hair. All right, boys, as well as at Fort Grant. We can fill our canteens there. Let's move out. Well, maybe there's some whiskey there, too. Hey, McKay, much as I dislike you and your race, I hope if there's whiskey at Grant, it's Scotch whiskey. Now, that's the first intelligent thing I've ever heard a puddle-headed Irishman say. <laughs> Can't be them. I don't see any woman with them. Those damn Yankees moving in. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of them, sir. Uh, ten Yankees, that's easy. McAmara, get me 20 men, man. Hold it, McAmara. We're going to stop them, aren't we? Not that way. The minute the war's over, you're a Yankee lover. I joined you because I thought you were still fighting for, for the Confederacy. We are. But we have to be here when the caravan comes through, alive and not dead. And I'm in command. Any questions? No. All right, then, McNamara, get the sentries posted. And get me a Yankee uniform. A captain's will do. A Yankee uniform? What for? I'm going to wear it. And you get one, too. From now on, this is Yankee POW camp. to kill. Hold it! This isn't Fort Hillway. You mind your manners around the brig, boys. We're just out of the U.S. 45th Cavalry, on our way to Santa Fe. All we want is food and water. Our next Lieutenant Winton. This ain't Santa Fe. Get on your way. What do you mean, go on our way? You bring me your commanding officer, soldier, and I mean right now. All we want is water. He wants to see the captain. Go on, let one of them in. Okay, Lieutenant, but just you. You boys stay right here. Hold it. I want to talk with you. There's nothing to talk about. It's a matter of life or death. You're wrong, friend. It's a matter of death only. I don't understand you, Captain. It's very simple. You and your men get out of here and get out of here fast. Look, we're on our way to New Mexico. I can't do anything to help you. You're forgetting regulations, aren't you, Captain? This is government property, isn't it? And you came here to remind me of regulations, huh? Look, we've all done our bit, Captain. Discharged personnel are entitled to food and water. Now, that comes under the Homestead Act. You've heard of the Homestead Act, haven't you? 
look, Mr. Uh, Winton. Larry Winton. Mr. Winton, here's a proposition. I give you a canteen per man and a gallon per horse, and you get out of here right now. That's practically nothing. You heard my proposition, Mr. Winton. Now, my man will fire without warning. This is a POW camp. It's a matter of regulations, Mr. Winton. Fire without warning. You hear? All right. Make it fast. The men might get impatient. I'm getting some luck. Here you are. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Hold it. Remember the lieutenant's orders. Stand fast. Crazy kid. Oh, Mr. Winton. The Indians on this territory, they don't want to share it with you. If you'll take my advice, you won't waste a second. Thank you, Captain. Look, my men are really hungry. If you could give me one pound of bacon for me. McAmara. Yes, sir. Give me a canteen for a man and a gallon for a horse, that's all. Yes, sir. Hold it! Hold the fire! I want you to know I just saved your life. You wouldn't have to if you listen to orders. You know our mission, Mr. Bannister. We don't go after them. They'll talk. If they're dead, they can't talk. They won't talk. They'll run. They kill a Union soldier. They'll run long and far. Twenty men and one hour. We wait here for the wagons, Mr. Bannister. All of us. Zubari, Sharp, bring up the rear guard, but keep us in sight. Now we're in trouble. We gotta move fast. If that idiot kid, he kill a guard, give him up. We started together, we'll finish together. Now we gotta find water. The army's behind us, we're in Indian country, so keep your eyes open. All right, come up here and get these canteens. Now take it easy on the water. It may have to last us a while. <laughs> I guess it kind of messed up back there, huh? Yeah. What's the matter? What's on your mind? You know, there's something funny about that Fort Grant. I always get a good look at a man when he's trying to kill me. Ah, uh, not me. I'm always too busy. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looked to me like three of those soldiers trying to gun me down was wearing red uniforms. Get it! Stop, Larry. You know how bad I want to get started again? I ain't no soldier, I'm a farmer. Santa Fe means I can live again. No more killing. I don't want anything to stop us. It's all right, Slim, you forget it. Straight ahead seems like there's a town over there. Let's move out.
three wagons in the carriage at Tamo Point. A carriage? So we get ready to go, sir. Well, the wagons are important, but... Uh, but what? She's more important. McNamara, send this message. Have Delmer and Forrester check if Violet Belmont is with the caravan. Send it right away. Yes, sir. You know we can use it. Well, whoever lived here didn't die from water for it. I don't like this place. What's the matter? Just because the saloon is closed? I don't like it either. Let's camp outside. No, here. I don't want anyone to see a fire. No one was following. I was watching. Maybe not, but if I could listen once in a while, we wouldn't be outlaws. I don't think we're outlaws. We'll talk about that later, but tonight we're going to stay here. We'll water the horses and put them in the blacksmith shop. So bar you, Meyer, and Sharp take care of the horses. The rest of us will look around. Horses have the treasure. <laughs> treasure of various types. You know him, ma'am? Let's put it this way. He knows me, Sergeant Benham. Sergeant Delmar, ma'am. Can you possibly come with us? I'm sorry, Miss Delmar. It's impossible. I've been given strict orders. Sides are friends waiting for you at Fort Grant. Thank you, Sergeant Delmar. I'm glad to know that the horses have the treasure. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. I'll inform Fort Grant that spring is here. You know what you have to say. Good luck, Sergeant. Let's continue, Sergeant Venom. Goodbye. She must be with them. What about the prisoners? We'll see about them later. But when? You can't wait till the last minute to shoot them. It seems as if you like the idea. This is war. The war is over. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I can't figure it out. Every building in this town is torn up. Somebody was looking for something. Something that was valuable. But why way out here in a little deserted town in the middle of nowhere? Whatever it was, it sure don't look like they found it. <laughs> hey, maybe the troops got here ahead of us and were looking for the kid. Leave him alone. Sure, he's my buddy. Besides, someday he's gonna be my top hand. You know, those guys got what they deserved. They had no right to refuse us water. We fought in the just like them. Yeah, but I wonder which side they fought on. Sure didn't seem to be ours. There's something strange about this town. Fort Grant, too. Can't figure it out. Fred Hillstrom, let's go check the horses. Good morning, Major Benton. I'm sorry to interrupt your sleep, but we have to leave now. I want you to understand, Major, you and your men, that I'm trying to save your lives. That's very kind of you, Major Hyde. We'll travel together until I've decided to let you go. You're no mistaken. When you and your men took over this fort, the war was over. You're not soldiers any longer, just outlaws and bandits. If you'll come with us, Major, you'll save your life. I gotta be away, Larry. I understand the kid. I'm not gonna let him go by himself. Good luck, Fred. You listen to me, follow my advice, and you'll get there alive. And rich.
you kill him, Lighter? Shut up, kid. Don't move and let me do the talking. Iron down. Just a minute, Chief. I want to talk to you. Oh, Lighter. Look, I'm your prisoner because I wanted to be. I got a proposition for you. I can make you the biggest Indian chief of all the chiefs. Numadon now, biggest of all Indian chiefs. Numadon no need help from jackals. Yeah, but you can't win with bows and arrows. I can offer you guns, rifles, ammunition, even cannon. Talk. I can offer you one million dollars in gold. You said guns. Gold buys guns. Who sell me guns? Me? I know where I can get guns. Why you do this? You like Indian? Well, I like money. For one half of the gold, one wagon, and safe passage, I'll lead you to the gold. You get the rest. Then when I bring you the guns, you pay me the rest of the gold. How I know you come back? Because <laughs> I'm a thief. I couldn't resist that much gold. Wait, we talk more. You should have been a liar. Wagon train. Many wagons leave four with gray whites and blue whites. Maybe come here tomorrow. Wagon's empty. Wagon's empty? Well, that's it. Somebody ought to be coming for it. White man, you talk me. <laughs> sure, Chief. It'll be easy. We'll let them load the gold, then we take the wagons. I take wagons. Well, I don't know how much good this is going to do. You got a better idea? Sure, but I don't think it'll work. Instead of waiting for them, we attack. Oh, that's a bright idea. There must be about a million of them out there. Well, you've got a great equalizer right here. That's it's a scare. We've got plenty of powder and no shot. When they come back in, we fire blanks. Well, there must be a lot of iron in this town. Oh, well, tell me how to melt it down and make shelves. You work for Belmont. I'll see her. What for? You haven't got any tea. Come on. How much does that gold work to you, ma'am? The gold goes where I go. Would you give it to save your life? Only then, if I had to. I have an idea. Might take all night. I'll melt that gold down into shells and fill them with powder. He's right, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Es escocés y un escocés no puede soportar que roje el oro a los indios. Tiene razón. Yo también voy a llorar con él. All right, I'll take care of that in the town. I'll cover this end. Okay, I'll take care of the cannon.
You lie, white thief. Big noise machine, shoot. Kill Indian. Uh, we can still beat them. Just don't circle them or charge direct. Attack them from their flanks. And uh, there are ways of protecting your braves from their rifles. It's big. Now the cannon won't do any good here. Don't you spread out. Oh, 